Lord, everyone, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we've come to rejoice. We've come to lift you up, God. We realize that there's no one greater than you, for you are the great Jehovah. You are the Lord that God who reigns. You are the Lord who delivers. You are Jehovah Gabor, the God who fights for us, the God of angel armies. So we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, God, and we enter into your courts with praise. God, to bless you. We release anything that we may be experiencing this week, whatever we've encountered this week, but it's all about you and your presence. As we, hallelujah, as we seek you this morning, we, we throw we throw ourselves, we put ourselves on the altar, forgetting those things, forgetting those things that have entangled us, that, have, that has uh, kept us bound, but God, we declare that we are free in your presence. We speak liberation in your presence. We speak liberation in your presence. Now God heal in the name of Jesus. Now God deliver in the name of Jesus. Set free, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we give your name the glory, hallelujah. We feel this wherever we are, whether we're in our homes, whether we're in our cars, we feel that wherever we are with your presence, let your glory fill the house. Let your glory fill the house. In the name of Jesus, let your glory fill the house. In the name of Jesus, we'll give your name the glory. We'll give your name the praise. We'll give your name the glory. For you alone are worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We give your name praise. Hallelujah. Now open up our ears so that may we hear your word. In the name of Jesus, open up our ears so that we may hear the word live by the word, whether it be through your Logos word, whether it be through your Rhema word. We thank you in advance for the word. Hallelujah. We'll receive it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you're going to do this morning. We thank you for what you're going to do this morning. By faith, we decree. We decree that we will not leave the same way that we came. In the name of Jesus. And as we give you praise, we give you honor. We decree and declare that it's already done. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. These things we decree and declare and say that it is so. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all Your name, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, stay right there. Let's lift him up. We come to give him glory. We come to give him honor. There's nobody like you. There's nobody above you. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Almighty One, bless the Lord, ye heavenly hosts, bless the Lord, all ye his angel, and let all the earth sing forth his praises, bless the Lord, Almighty One. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, ye heaven. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels. And let all the earth sing forth his praise.
glad that you could be with us on this morning. We wanted to celebrate you and celebrate the Lord even during this time of worship. We're so glad that you're able to be with us this morning. I want to remind you just real quick of a passage of scripture that comes out of 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 says this. And I'm reading out of the Amplified Version. It says, Now he who provides seed for the sower and bread for, uh, for food will multiply your seed for sowing. That is your resources and increase the harvest of your righteousness, which shows itself in active, active goodness, kindness, and love. Listen, God is providing for sowers. I'm going to say that again. God is providing for sowers. God is providing for sowers. So those of you who are ready to sow your seed, this morning, we know that you're ready to bless the Lord even in this opportunity to give. And you know all the ways that we have where you can begin to sow and give this morning. And there on the bottom of your screen, we ask that you would sow generously, knowing that the Lord loves, according to Scripture, a cheerful giver. So we thank you so much for being with us this morning. And we want you to celebrate the Lord in your giving. So go ahead, grab your phones, your tablets, or whatever it is that you do to get online and make sure you're giving this morning. You're using the Cash app using Giveify, you're going online to kingdomworshipcenter.org and you're giving that way. But we want to make sure that you're sowing this morning and sowing in the good ground. And I want you this morning to believe God for an increase in your harvest. That I want you to believe, I'm going to say it again, I want you to believe God this morning for an increase in your harvest. That as you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. But God increases us in ways that we cannot increase ourselves. Hallelujah. So I respect I expect God to do great things in your life and great things in our lives. So we thank you so much for an opportunity just to sow this morning. And just while you're here, if you have not already, just make sure you're sharing this page. Share it out. Let people know that we're on this morning. Invite them to be a part. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube page. Do all of that this morning. And let somebody know this morning will be a day of miracles for them. Yeah. So they definitely need to make sure that they're here with us this morning. God bless you. Celebrate the Lord in your giving.
I have peace in knowing. For the Lord delights in showing mercy. Every day, every day, for the Lord delights in showing mercy. Every day, new mercies I see, for the Lord delights in showing mercy. For the Lord delights, for the Lord delights in showing mercy. God, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for new mercies every day. God, we're so undeserving of it, God, but you keep on blessing us. You keep on keeping us, God, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. God, we pour it out on this morning. We pour it out onto you on this morning. God, we lay aside every weight. Anything that may have distracted us, we thank you, God. Take a moment and just say something to Jesus. We bless you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs so we pour out a praise pour out a praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out a praise to you only great are you lord Great are you, Lord. Can I say that again? It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out a praise, pour out a praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out a praise to you only. Great. Say it's your breath, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour, pour it out, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour, so we pour out, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour, pour out our, it's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour, so we pour out our praise. Pour, it's your breath, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. One more time. Pour See, it's your breath. We exalt you, Jesus. We ask that you have your way. As we prepare for the word of God, we ask that you would have your way on this morning. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. It's all the earth will shout your Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great.
your own time. Make it personal. Oh, great are you, Lord. There is nobody like you, Jesus. Great, great are you, Lord. There is nobody like you. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. One so much for your greatness, your faithfulness to us. There's none like you in all the earth. We declare, great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. The whole earth will sing your praise. Hallelujah. Even our bones will sing about your greatness. So we thank you, Lord, so much for being so sovereign, so mighty, so strong in our lives. There's no power greater than yours. Hallelujah. You're the great and awesome God. And we love you so much, Lord this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would open our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Cause us not just to be hearers of your word, but doers of the same. Thank you, Lord, that we are living epistles this morning, being converted and changed from our first man into the man that you have called us to be. Living epistles where men can read thereof. So we thank you so much for these things. We pray, Lord, that as we continue to move throughout this day, we thank you for miracles. We thank you for signs and wonders that follow them that believe. We declare this morning that we are believers, so we anticipate, hallelujah, miracles, signs, and wonders following us. We declare that they won't just follow, but they will catch up with us, hallelujah, and we'll witness and experience the manifestation of the same. Now, anoint me, your man servant, to, to speak the truth of your word, not to dabble in error or antics, but to God to declare that which is your will. We declare that I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I know you're home, but just want you to just give God a great God bless you or praise or something of that nature and just hallelujah or thank you, Jesus. Or hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm so glad to be with you in your homes this morning and, uh, or your cars, wherever you are, uh, wherever you are finding yourself this morning as you worship the Lord with us, uh, whether you be at work, wherever you are, streaming 
our services. I promise you God has something special for you this morning. There is something uh, that God is trying to make sure that his people receive. And if you're like me, I want you to declare uh, that I'm not going to miss what the Lord has for me. Ah, hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. I'm not going to miss what the Lord has for me. I am not going to miss what the Lord has for me. What God has for me will not escape me. It will not avoid me. I will not miss what God has for me. Amen. And we declare that every blessing of the Lord, every promise of the Lord in your life is yea and amen. Amen. And so I want to get into the word this morning. It won't be before you very long, uh, but we thank you so much for uh, what is uh, what is the will of God, the plan of God this morning? Uh, if you would grab your Bibles with me, and if you would turn to the uh, Second Kings, uh, Second Kings, uh, chapter twenty, Second Kings, chapter twenty, Second Kings, it's right after First Kings, uh, just Second Kings, chapter twenty. There we shall uh, find our uh, lesson for this particular morning service. Um, if you have not invited someone already to be a part. I invite them to be a part of our service, share the services this morning. I'm believing God this morning that somebody right where they are will be healed. I'm believing this morning that God's going to show himself mighty in the life of somebody this morning. Uh, so please just go ahead and uh, share, share, share uh, this morning's message uh, with somebody and make sure you subscribe to our uh, YouTube pages. We, we appreciate uh, you being a part of what we're doing in the earth. Amen. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 through 6, it reads as such. It says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face towards the wall, and he prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech ye, Lord, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. Hezekiah wept sore, and it came to pass before, uh, it came to pass before Isaiah was gone out of the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Turn again. Tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, thy God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer and have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee, good God Almighty. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord, and I will add, to, I will add thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee uh, and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Amen. This morning, I want to talk to us just for a moment uh, from this uh, subject, kingdom mindset, kingdom mindset, kingdom mindset. But I'm still under the same theme uh, that, uh, that is probably going to be with us for some time, of dominionators, dominionators. Uh, if you're streaming with us for the first time, I've got to explain that word dominionators uh, for you because you probably don't know exactly what I mean by dominionators. Uh, you probably say, there that guy goes uh, mispronouncing words. That's how those preachers do. Uh, no, I mean dominionators, not dominators, but dominionators. And what I see in this actual uh, passage or, or, or in this different terminology that I'm using is that the difference between a dominator and a dominionator is that a dominionator is somebody who understands that they have been given to have dominion. And one of the things that a lot of times when we read in Genesis chapter 1 and we talk about how God created man in his own image and after his likeness, the Bible declares, and he gave dominion to, to men. He gave dominion. He gave us dominion. But a lot of times we find ourselves in a place where we are attempting to take dominion. We're trying to fight for dominion. And when you find yourself in a place where you're trying to always fight for, you also understand that as you are fighting, you're looking to dominate but not walk in dominion. See, the difference is between that is that a dominator always feels like they are in competition to achieve and to have 
and have to fight for and have to uh, go to a place of resisting and, and looking for who their enemy is and how can I defeat and how can I be victorious. But when you understand that you don't have to take dominion, but you have dominion, your posture becomes different. See, when you understand that you have dominion, you're not in a place where you just realize that you got to fight. But when you're in a place where you have dominion, you realize the importance of, watch this word, rest. Good God Almighty. Of resting in who he's called you to be. Resting in the assignment that he has for you. So you don't necessarily have to fight for everything. Some things you just sit back and watch what God is doing. And those who realize that they are uh, dominionators, they realize that as a dominionator, I don't have to fight every fight. Good God Almighty. I don't have to wrestle in every battle. I don't have to put up my dukes every time something's going on. I can actually be in a place where I take the responsibility as somebody who has dominion and sit back and watch God do it. The truth of the matter is, is that I am commanded to be seated with him. Y'all not helping me in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So sometimes I find myself fighting when I ought to be resting. And so dominionators, I want to command us. I want to teach us. I want to make sure that in our prophetic imagination that we are not fighting warfare that we don't need to fight. But we realize that we're standing on promises that have been made and will be kept. Good God, can I say that again? We're standing on promises that have been made and will be kept. Good God Almighty. And so I'm not looking to fight you. I'm looking to rest in his will. I'm looking to rest in his plan. I'm looking to rest in what he said and what he declared about me. Because if he said it, that settles it. That settles it. That settles it. So, so that's part of what we have to do is as, as people who are, have a kingdom mindset, we are dominionators. We have a kingdom mindset. I'm not looking to fight nobody. <laughs> I'm looking to illuminate the situation. But do, see, because what dominionators realize is that they have been set up to be the light of the world. So I'm not looking to change anything. If you just let my light shine, if you just let me begin to illuminate what's actually happening, I can change points of view without getting in an argument. Good God Almighty. How do you do it? How do you change somebody's point of view without getting in an argument? I let my light do its work. Good God Almighty. Which means I just decide to be, y'all not helping me. Can I say it again? I decide to be instead of fighting to do. Good God Almighty. I decide to be instead of wrestling with how can we get this done. I tell you how we get it done. Just be who God has called you to be. Just operate in who he's called, who he's made you to be. If you be who God's called you to be, some things will begin to change in our lives, our lives. And so we realize that we must have, we must have as dominionators a kingdom mindset. One of the things that I love that happens in this passage of scripture, because I really want us to be in a place where we understand the kingdom of God and how we ought to operate as persons who are part of the kingdom of God. So, hallelujah. I am a part of the kingdom of God. I'm a part of the kingdom of God, which means my assignment is to walk in and have dominion. That is my assignment because the king's position has already been taken. The dominion is my role in all of this. And so my role in this is to make sure that everybody understands who the king is as I exercise and walk in the dominion that he commanded me to actually have. He commanded me to have. And so as we look through this, one of the things I like about this uh, particular pericope that we're looking at uh, with the life of Hezekiah is that Hezekiah is in the place where he is uh, now uh, realizing that he's, his life is on the line. His life is on the line. He's, he is sick unto death. The Bible says he's sick unto the death. And the prophet comes up to his room and says, listen, you're not just sick unto the death, dude. You're going to die. And, it, and it's, it's, it's almost the, the irony of the way uh, that it's even written in Scripture. The Bible says in, in the King James language, it says, he says, uh, get your house, set the house in order. He says, for thou shalt die and you're not going to live, just in case you're confused about the two. <laughs> he, he makes it real clear, you're going to die and you're not going to live. It sounds like the same thing to me, but he makes it very clear to him that this thing is over. You won't have much more coming to you. But this man begins to turn his face now to the wall. The Bible says he turns his face to the wall and he is now in a place where he's no longer distracted by the things that have been distracting him. Can I tell you, people who have a kingdom mindset in this season must begin to turn away from all of their distractions. Good God Almighty. We've got to get to the place where we decide that, you know what, I know some things are distracting me, but i got to get out of this place because everything else is looking to kill me, wants me to die, wants me not to live. But in this season,
season of my life, I got to make sure I'm turning towards the wall and I'm focused on God. What is it, God, that you're saying? And what's amazing about it is though the prophet has already told him what's going to happen, his refocus, come on, say with me, refocus, his refocus then causes God's mind, who, who is the same yesterday and forevermore, and changeth not. He causes God to change his mind about him. Good God Almighty. Because it wasn't just anybody who told him it was going to die. It was the prophet of God that told him. Did the prophet lie? Surely he didn't know. God changed his mind about him. Good God Almighty. Can I tell you, dominionators, that one of the things you will find in your life in this season will be the ability to change God's mind about you. Good God Almighty. You'll find yourself with favor with God where it says some things you should have reaped. But if you refocus yourself, you'll change God's mind. Things that you were supposed to get, hallelujah, won't be yours anymore. And things that you thought were going to avoid you will end up in your house. Good God. Woo, God. He, uh, he loves. Let me slow down. I get so excited. And so, so he's in this place where, where he's actually deaf turns away and new life comes walking in. Good God Almighty. Ah. And so, and what I love about this as well is one of the things as a dominionator that you will understand this that we see in the scripture with Hezekiah is that the victory that you get is not just your victory. Because the scripture declares that this time, well, good God, even before I get there, let me, I'll talk about that in a second. But before I get there, because I'm reading the scripture in my mind in order, is the other thing that happens, of course, is that he gives him, he says, you got three days to get up here. And when you get up here in the three days, don't y'all, don't, don't mess with me with three days and how to go to another place in three days. We'll leave that alone. We'll talk about that on Easter Sunday. But he gets three days to get up there. When he gets there, then all of a sudden God says to him, I'm going to give to you 15 years. He exchanges, y'all, please help me preach, days for years. Could you nudge your neighbor and say, I believe God's going to do some great exchange in your life. Good God. God, you've got a great exchange, though, oh, dominionator, that's coming in your life. Where you've been looking for days, but God's going to give you years. You thought you could, if you could just have it for a little while, but God's going to let you have it for season after season after season. Good God about it. You thought you just wanted it just a little bit, huh? but God says, I'm going to put you in a place where you've got a whole lot to deal with. Good God about it. Can I tell you that God is changing how, not just the fact that you're going to be blessed, but he's changing how? He's changing the measurement of your blessing. Can I put it that way? Somebody say, the measurement of my blessing is changing. Uh, what are you saying? I'm saying that if you got days... Look for years. Good God Almighty. If you had seed, look for trees. Good, good God Almighty. I'm telling you that your measurement is being changed. Your measurement is being changed. As dominionators who have a kingdom mindset, a kingdom mindset, he goes to this way and he says, he says, you know, I'm going to give you years in exchange for these days. But the other thing he says, he says, the victory that you will receive won't just be a victory for you, but for the whole city. Uh, the whole city will now be in a place where they get victory uh, because, hallelujah, I'm going to do it, watch this, for my own sake. Good God Almighty. See, some of you are so close to God, and you need to type it in the... In, in the, in the, in the uh, bar, the chat bar, ha, I've been close to you, God. I've been close to you, God. And some of you have been so close to God that God's going to do some things for you for himself. I'm going to say that again. God's going to do some things for you for himself. God's going to do some things for you but for himself. And so you'll find yourself in a place because you can go back and say, God, I was faithful with this. Well, God says, well, I'm going to do it for my own sake. Good God Almighty. But you will reap the benefit. Good God Almighty. You will reap the benefit because you're a dominionator. You're going to reap the benefit because you've been walking with his will. You've been, you've been trying to walk out his statutes. You've been trying to keep his commandments. You've been faithful over a few things and waiting for a ruler to be over much. And God says, I'm about to change some things and I'm going to do it for my own sake. Hallelujah. I'm going to do it for my own sake. So they find themselves at that place. One thing, though, I want to warn you, Dominionate is about, because one of the things that Hezekiah does, and I, and I didn't read it, and, but, but I want to talk about it just for a hot second, is just make sure that as you get into the place where God blesses you, that you don't start showing your hand to your enemy. Good God. Don't show the enemy your hand. 
Don't show the enemy what God's been up to in your life. Some things you got to keep secret. God Almighty. Some things you need to keep private. Some things you need to make sure that the enemy doesn't know about about you. Good God Almighty. Sometimes you just got to be a powerful storm that's coming in so quiet. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Reminds me of uh, Terry when we were young boys listening to EAA late at night. I say it like he was my brother. Uh, and you used to listen to the quiet storm. You remember the quiet storm, don't you? I know you do. Hallelujah. The quiet storm. Uh, everybody that's my age remembers the quiet storm. You remember the quiet storm? Okay, all right. And so, so here it is where God is saying, I'm calling you to be a quiet storm. I'm calling you to, to change some things, but don't let the enemy know everything you're up to. Good God Almighty, don't show him your hand. Don't show him how, 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 how much I'm blessing you, because then the enemy will want to take from you what I've given to you. Good God Almighty. But somebody just knows this morning that, you know what? God has called me to do some damage to the kingdom of darkness, and I'm not going to let nobody know what I'm up to. They'll just find out once I hit shore. Good God Almighty. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, we are of a kingdom mindset. We are dominionators. We have a kingdom mindset. Turn with me, if you would, please, in the New Testament, the gospel according to Matthew, uh, the 13th chapter. You may wonder how in the world this, how this has something to do uh, with the rest of this uh, passage. But uh, I want you to, to take a look there. And as you go into Matthew 13, you go to Matthew 13, Matthew, of course, we know is, is one of the persons who begins to write uh, to those who are Jews. So, so a lot of times, even when he talks about the kingdom of God, he doesn't use God in his language. He uses kingdom of heaven in his language because uh, to use the, the name God would have been an offense to those who are Jewish. So he does not uh, use the kingdom of God in his language. He uses in his language uh, because of his audience, the kingdom of heaven. And so as he begins to talk about the kingdom of heaven or, or what we would call the kingdom of God, he begins to say what it is like. And I need us to understand this because as dominionators, we must understand like never before what we should be walking in and exercising in as dominionators, as the kingdom of God. So we need to know uh, more than anybody else knows what the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is like. And the Bible says, I'm just going to take you to Matthew 13 and just we'll just hit a couple verses of scripture real quick. We'll start at verse 24. And another parable could, uh, well, let me, let me start. Let me set it up instead of going to verse 24. Let's jump to 34 first uh, because it's important. This In chapter 34, or in, or in chapter, I'm sorry, 13, verse 34, he says this. He says, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parable. Without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open up my mouth in parables and will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. Good God Almighty. I need you to know, all oh, you dominionators, you people with kingdom mindsets, I need you to understand that God is revealing to you secrets that are foundational. Good God. Foundational secrets become the property of dominionators. Good God. Can I say that again? Foundational secrets. It's up to you to know the foundational secrets and to walk in and not to be a fooled by what the world is showing you. You have to, we have to walk in the authority that we have been given as dominionators and to understand the secrets of this world that are foundational, that have been set before the world even began. Understand that God's mind was already on the world before the world was constructed. And there are some secrets about this world that he wants to make sure that you have. So some of the things you see in the world should not rule you as a dominionator. Come on, y'all, right? Because you're a dominionator, so the things you see don't rule you. You're not moved by somebody else's attitude. That's what people who are not dominionators do. Good. But dominionators, could God Almighty, walk in a knowledge and a knowing that they're not moved by the things that they see. For the things that they see, come on, help me in Scripture, are temporal. But the things that are not seen are eternal. Good God Almighty. So they are in a place as dominionators that they say, I can't operate just by what my eyes are telling me. I operate by what the Lord has released in my heart that has been birthed before the foundations even of this world. So I know I've got strength even when I feel weak. That's why he says, let the weak. Good God, say that I'm strong. Let the poor say that I'm rich. Why? Because you've tapped 
tapped into something that is beyond what the world can comprehend or understand. You are a dominionator. You're a dominionator. You have a kingdom mindset. So we, we begin to go through all of these things and, and we understand that, that God is up to something. So, so let me get to, to 24 now so, so that I'm not too long. He says, he says in verse 24, and I'll just start uh, with your red letter, start in your red letter Bible. It says, uh, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now, one of the things that your Bible probably makes the mistake, Neil, if you would take a look in your Bible, one of the things it does, and it makes the mistake of actually saying that this parable is the parable about the wheat and the tear. You've heard that. It's the parable of the wheat and the tear. But if you read the text, just read the text, it says, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed a seed, which sowed a good seed in his field. It doesn't say it's like the seed. It says it's like the man. Uh, and what we miss a lot of times is, see, we've been looking for, uh, for how do we handle the seed process. But it's not about the seed. It's about the man. Oh, y'all, I'm sorry, y'all. Huh. So when you read the scripture and you read it then from that different lens of then what is the man up to, then that begins to tell what we need to be paying attention to in this particular parable as those who are dominionators. Because if you read it only as in the context of the seed of the, of the wheat and the tare, you get caught up in what is sold and how uh, you got other stuff growing with the wheat. But if you look at it in the parable of the man, you then understand that there's something that the man does wrong. And that is, first of all, he sleeps. Good God Almighty. When night comes, good God Almighty. And so one thing that should be happening as those who are dominionators is they should not allow night to dictate their sleep. Good God Almighty, I feel like preaching. They don't allow night seasons to tell them when it is I'm laying down. Because this parable is not about the wheat and tan, it's about the man. And the man in this particular passage, his error that he makes is that he lays down when it's night. And the Bible says, and when he lays down, his enemy comes because he decides to sleep. If he was going to lay down, he understood that then your assignment is to make sure somebody's on watch. Good God Almighty. And people who are dominionators realize that either I'm going to stay up or somebody's going to be up. Because what I have is too valuable to let the enemy to play with. Ah, uh, oh God, dominionators, can I declare to you that you what you have is too valuable to let your enemy play with? Can I say it again? What you have is too valuable to let your enemy play with. Your family is too valuable to let your enemy play with. Your job is too valuable to let your enemy play with. Your faith is too valuable to let your enemy play with. Your belief is too valuable to let your enemy play with. Don't go to sleep just because it's night. It's something that becomes missed within the text. But God wants to make sure that we understand that in this parable... That you understand night will come. Somebody just, uh, come on, y'all. We dominionators. We know night will come because that's how the God created the world. And because we understand at the time of creation, God, I feel like preaching. He creates it and he says, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And the evening and the morning were the second day. So night came first, in fact. <laughs> and you didn't get here sleeping first. God Almighty, you got here already awake. So how dare us to allow night to dictate how we respond? Uh, we have, we've been allowing uh, cycles that show up to dictate how we go through certain things. And God is saying to us, no, no. Uh, uh, people with kingdom mindsets who are dominionators realize that they don't allow, they, don't, they refuse to sleep on their assignment and they won't allow anyone else to do it and they also understand the value of the seed and one thing as well that as we look at the man throughout this passage the other thing that he understands is he understands the value of protecting that which has been rooted good god almighty see uh, one of the things the enemy really wants us to do is he wants us to let go and begin to pay so much attention to the other thing that we forget what is rooted with it. 
Yeah. So then you begin to pull up tear, and now the, that which has been rooted, that God has planted, begins to get torn up with it. But God says, don't, uh, don't ignore what has been rooted already. Good God Almighty. And can I tell you what is amazing about that? Is that the good seed, remember, it's a good seed. The good seed is so good that even bad seeds' roots won't choke it out. Oh, God. Lord, I want to dance and run and run and dance. Hallelujah. I got on my dancing shoes today. Yes, I do. And this is some good wood up here. I'm telling you. Good God Almighty. Ah, ah, but, but here it is where God has us in this place where he's saying to us, he's saying, listen, I've, you're, I, the, the seed that I've given you is an effective seed. The seed that I've given you is a seed that works. It's a good seed. And understand, everything God, come on, let's go back to Genesis. Everything God creates, what does he call it? Good. He says he creates man. It's good. It's good. It's good. And God gives you the good thing. Good God Almighty. Ha ah, God. Okay. All right. All right. All right. He does not leave good in his responsi responsibility alone, but he gives the good thing to the millionaires. He says you can handle the good thing. Oh, Lord. Okay. Uh, so here it is where, where we now have uh, this, this responsibility that's going on. I'm not going to make it through all the text. Uh, we understand that he's, he's also making sure that he's going to protect what, is, what has been rooted. I'm in, I am, I'm in verse 29. If, if you're looking somewhere in your scripture and you're trying to figure out where is he getting all of this from. Uh, but, and then if you go... Uh, Hear, hear me, if you go to verse 30, I need you to also understand the other thing that the man has. Say this is what the man has. This is what the man has. What the man has as the dominionator is he has confidence in what God has given him to be able to work. He trusts what God has given him. And, can, and if we would tell the truth, there are sometimes God gives us some things. And we accept it, but we're not so sure how it's going to work. How do I use what you've given me? I've got dreams, but I don't know what to do with them. Y'all not help me. I see people healed, but they, uh, but they're always sick. How do I use what you've given me? Oh, dominionator, let me tell you, you got to trust that what he's given you will work. Good God, I feel like talking to us. You got to trust and believe that if he's given it to you, it's going to become what God said it would be. Hallelujah. And he gives it to you in seed form, but it won't stop there. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. And so, so, so let me just read. Let me read. Calm down, Gregory. Calm down. Let's talk. Usa. Okay. Uh, so verse 30 says this. It says, let both grow together until the harvest. And in that time of the harvest, I will say unto the reapers, gather ye together first the tares. Bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather the wheat and put them into my barn. Whew. Good God Almighty. Oh, God. Ah. He, at the time of harvest, he would do that. So I, I, I got I to gotta move. I got to move. I got to move. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I got just a couple minutes. I'm going to give this and I'm going to get out of here. The other thing he does, I'm, I'm going to skip down to mustard seed. The parable of the mustard seed, right? That's what we have, the parable of the mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed. So this time they got it right. Okay. <laughs> Second to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took. See, the man took it, but the comparison is the seed, not the man. The man took and he sowed into his field. Mm -hmm. So to understand now what the kingdom of God is like, we have to look at the seed. That has been planted. And here's what he says. Verse 32, you know this. He says, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs. Becoming a tree so that the birds of the air can come and, and, and lodge in the branches thereof. Hmm. So what do you say, uh, Bishop G? That the kingdom of God has come to you, dominionator, as a small thing. Oh, he was like, I just got my faith. All I got is my faith. But God says, but your faith 
is about to blow up. Yeah, I think. Ah, I'm going to close this book. I'm going to close this book. Your faith is about to go and take you to exponential places that you have not seen or even thought of before. Your faith is going to work in areas that you thought were dead, abandoned, hallelujah, that were desert lands, things that you thought would never grow, never become nothing, never had anything. God says, I'm going to do something with that. And he says, I'm going to take the least and make it the greatest. Can I say it another way? God says, I'm going to take the least and I'm going to make it the greatest. It's the least of the seeds, but it's the greatest of the herbs. Good God Almighty. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing that I started out one way and I end up the very opposite way. Well, what, what, but then again, it makes sense. It is within his words because he says, and the first shall become, y'all not have, last, and the last shall become first. Good God. And the head, y'all not help me, uh, shall become the tail. And y'all not help me. So he says, uh, this is how I work. And so though you ended up in a place where you looked at your hands and you wondered, what is it that I really have? Baby, just hold on for a little while. If you've been feeling sick, be healed. Y'all not help me. If you've been feeling like you're in bondage, be delivered. If you feel, y'all couldn't call the mighty. So wherever you've been, but just hold on to what he has given you. Because that's going to grow in an exponential way. That's going to be an exponential way. That's how dominionators with a kingdom mindset operate. We don't think like everybody else thinks. People will be frustrated by your mindset. And your response will be just keep watching. And you just see seed form now. But if you keep on watching, if you stay with me for a little while, you're going to see the hand of the Lord. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Take me from being the tail and make me the head. If you just hang on for a little while. And understand this, listen, I, I'm not one who always talks about the fact that somebody's got to be the head of the company, the head of the corporation, like you got to own every business. That's not what I'm declaring to you. I'm telling you, you can be the administrative assistant and your boss come out to you and be like, so what is it that I need to do? Honey, that is you being the head and not the tail. Good God Almighty. That is you having, good God, the heart of the king. Y'all not help me. Right in your hands. And can I tell you that is one of the promises of us dominionators. Hallelujah. That's who God has called us to be. Favor upon your life. Favor upon your life. Favor upon your life. Favor upon your life. Terry, I'm finished. Oh, you was already... He was already starting. Favor upon your life. I want to pray that we, and I didn't, I didn't turn, I didn't go through everything that I had, but I think you've gotten enough to understand exactly where we're coming from. I want us to understand who God has called us to be as Dominionators with a kingdom mindset. I don't think like everybody else. Because I understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. When I see a man who's born blind, I no longer ask the question, who did sin? This man or his mother. I understand that this was for the glory of God. To be revealed. And so God would have us in this place on this morning so that we could understand that God is up to something in the kingdom of God. Believers, stop agreeing with everything that everybody else says. Kingdom citizens, don't sound like every protest that's in the world. You kingdom citizens, don't sound and echo every poll that you hear out in our current state of politics. As you look at numbers of deaths approach 140,000, over 140,000 deaths, don't become so bothered that you're scared. Understand that God's at work. And you are at say it again. 
And if you're like Hezekiah and you get sick, remind God, a millionaire, what God has done. Remind him of the time that you were faithful in his life. Let him change his mind. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Let's pray. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your sovereignty. We thank you so much for how you have called us to be. You've called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. You've made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You have been our safe place. God, we're so grateful on this morning for how you have caused us to remember all of the mysteries you've exposed to we declare this morning that we understand the mystery, that the mystery has been revealed, and we will walk in the truth of it. And we thank you so much for your love for us and the power of that love to change, to heal, to set free, to deliver, to bind. Your love is perfect. Now, God, we pray for the unbeliever this morning. We pray for those who have not yet given their heart to God. We pray, Lord, that they would receive the salvation that you've already won for them. We pray, Lord, that their hearts would be turned towards you. But God, we don't just want them saved. We don't want them saved and going through just routines. We pray, God, that as they accept you as Lord and Savior of their life, that they would also walk in a new authority in their own life. So that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and His world. We glorify you. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. We pray that you've been blessed. Please come back and be with us again. God bless you. Our weekly Bible study small groups are still meeting. If you haven't joined a small group yet or need to find one that better fits your schedule, Please send an email to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org and request more information. Are you a young adult between the ages of 18 to 35? Send an email to yaya at kingdomworshipcenter.org with your contact information to receive news on what's coming up for the young adults. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at KWC Merrill. Like our Facebook page by searching Kingdom Worship Center or Team KWC. That's T-E-E-M-K-W-C. Calling all essential worshipers for our outdoor service held at our Columbia campus, second and fourth Sundays at 8.30 a.m., 9160 Red Branch Road in Columbia, Maryland. Make sure you bring your lawn chair and your mask as we practice social distancing.
Pastor Tanya and the Women's Ministry Council for a virtual beach party on Saturday, August 1st at 2 p.m. Email Women's Council at KingdomWorshipCenter.org to RSVP by July 30th. Any Kingdom Worship Center members who haven't received a bottle of anointing oil can come either Wednesday or Thursday between 6 and 7 p.m. to our Towson campus. This oil was made by our very own Lady Deborah Dennis using the recipe in Exodus, consecrated and prayed over for the edification of the saints. like to request prayer or have a praise report you'd like to share with us, please email us at info at kingdomworshipcenter.org. forward to having you back with us online next Sunday and every Sunday at 10 a.m. at either kwc.online.church, our Kingdom Worship Center Facebook page, or on our YouTube channel at Kingdom Worship Center Media. We pray you have been impacted in a mighty way.